I'm just putting it on her Instagram. Awesome. I'm going to share it right too. Oh, yeah. It says we're live. Yeah, we're live. Oh, yeah, we're live. I wonder if I hit awesome, the home awesome. key if it will allow me. You know what? I'm not I'm not gonna do anything. You guys yeah. <laughs> You're just gonna sit back and watch us make a fool of ourselves. <laughs> Beautiful. I like that. All right. So here we cool. go. Welcome guys. Welcome to the live stream. This is the SEP show. Today is May the sixth. <laughs> the days are flying, man. You know, yep. the days are, the days flying. are flying. I don't know about you guys, but the days yeah, are we should, we, we should have like a, a good intro. <laughs> Yep, we need to do a nice intro video for when we yeah. go live. Yep, we do need that. Yep, we need a lot of things. Yep, we do. We do. We get in there. All right. Right. Um, so we welcome, like... guys. Welcome to the show. Um, yeah. As usual, you know that. Um... Slowly, slowly. Yep, 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 yep. We're there. <laughs> okay. What are we going to talk about today, guys? So, um, as usual today, we just want to um, hang out and chat, uh, but we want to see, because with these days of um, Instagram and everything, and people always trying to put out their best work, sometimes it becomes a little bit um, tough and hard for you to share out your stuff because you feel like your pictures are not good enough yeah. or you know somebody's better than you or stuff like that right? always um and so this the, today's discussion is just to let people know that um not every shot you're gonna take it's gonna be perfect you're always gonna um there's always a learning curve right and there's never an end to learning to be creative you're always gonna have challenges you're always gonna have um yeah situ situations and you have to learn to to overcome those situations, right? Uh, so that's what we're talking about today, right, guys? Absolutely. I got a few. I got a few photos to share. Yep. 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 Doing the live from the car, if you guys haven't noticed. I I <laughs> did. Yeah, I did. But due to uh, technical issues, um, I'll just tell you about it. And just believe me, they were really yeah. bad. <laughs> it was really bad. It was really really bad. Cool. Well, we appreciate you jumping on anyway. Yep. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, StreamYard. <laughs> Last week it was Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> StreamYard, so. yep. Next week will be like Nike or something. So last week it was Zoom, today is StreamYard. Yeah. So yeah. Who knows what's going to happen yeah. next week? It's only bigger and better, man. It's only we, bigger and better. We need to split the... We need to split the... We need to split the sponsorship m money yeah, equally. We do. <laughs> only, only if your only if you're, only if your audio was good though, because <laughs> you're kind of breaking up again. Yeah. All right. So um, a little bit. A little bit. What's the first? Qu I'm. I can go first. I can go no. first. All right. So Paul, take on. Ah, uh, 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 hold on. Yeah. yeah, let me go first. Uh, hopefully this. So what I did was I basically went through all the meetups that we've done this year, which is not a lot because of the lockdown. And I picked out a few photos that I took. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. You guys see this? Yep. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Why is it doing that? Hang on for a second. What? I don't know why I just did that for a second, but anyway. I stopped the share, right? Yep. Yeah. So let me try that again. Cool. You guys see this photo? Okay. Let me bring you in. Yep. There we go. Okay. So this photo is probably January. 
And um, I think, I mean, this location in Toronto, I mean, Salome probably doesn't know, but Evans knows. Like, this is a pretty popular area to shoot the CN Tower just because. Was that, was that feedback? Uh, yeah, I came back and uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I'm going to put my audio on uh, okay. mute. And then... Cool. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so this is downtown Toronto, obviously, and it's a pretty popular location to shoot the CN Tower. But the reason why I don't like this photo, for a lot of reasons, one, it's overexposed. B, like, the snow doesn't really complement the scene, I think. Um, this location, I think, is a lot better for fall, to be honest with you, just because when these trees are full bloom, they have the leaves changing color. Um, it just makes for a better scene. Uh, these cars here don't really do anything. Um, and I think really like the first, I guess the point of this photo is that the timing matters, like wherever you're gonna shoot in terms of like seasons. Because anytime you go on Instagram and you look at this location, it's either summer or fall, usually is when you wanna hit hit this spot just because it has, I think it's, you can get, you can get out a lot of, you can get a lot out of the scene, but not in the winter in my opinion. But I was trying to go for it because I saw a photo did like I guess a few days before this, and I'm like, oh, I kind of want to shoot this location, but it didn't really come out the way that I thought it was going to come out. I don't know, Evans, if you've been down, like you've sure you've been to this area before, right, Evans? Yeah, I have. Um, I remember uh, one of the meetups that was organized by I think Nick. Nick, yeah, you guys went down there. And um, I, I this, see, this is the thing with um, especially when you're shooting events and and locations like this, right? Um, you may pass by there, even within the same um, season, right? You may go to the location, do a scouting, and um, if it's in the afternoon, yeah, you may see that your your what do you call it? Your um, the scene looks completely nice and beautiful uh, based on what time of the day you looked at it, right? Yeah, and then you come back thinking, oh, this is gonna look nice, and then you come back another time, different what are this different temperature different lighting situations yeah. and it looks completely the opposite totally right so that's that's one of the things that we always have to look out for yeah 100 percent. like sometimes you have a, have a vision in your head and um what comes out of the camera is not what matches your vision so i think it's important to not have the expectation like you kind of how you did the intro at the start is to not have the expectation that you're going to get a banger photo because for example i made go out and take like 20 photos that may only like two of them. So don't have the expectation that all of them are going to be amazing photos. I would put yep. more emphasis on the, on the, like on the process. Yep. And that's, that's one thing that people sometimes do not um, know or do not take into consideration that when you see people posting out on Instagram, um, they're always going through and they're picking out their best. Right. Yeah. So if you're comparing oh. your shots to, what you see people put out on Instagram, you're always going to get yourself um, kind of depressed or probably even quit because you're going to feel like, why is it that my photos are not good enough, right? Or exactly. are not comparing to these people. But um, some of them have been doing it for years. So one, they, they have a good ratio of um, the keeps the keepers from the garbage, right? Yes. Uh, but the whole idea is when you shoot one location, you doesn't go there and then you just take one picture and you're done. You you look at it from different angles, different positions. Shoot as many as you can, bring it back in, and pick the best one out of the bunch. Uh, yeah. It same works for both landscape, um, whatever type of photography you're doing. The same thing that applies. You got to take more and then pick the best one out of um, yeah. the, the shots that you, you shoot. It's a numbers game, right? Yep. It really is a numbers game. You went back inside, Slurm? Yes, I went back inside. <laughs> okay. Is the sound much better now? Yep. yep. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is a, a numbers game. And, um, uh, you know, they say one half is timing and the other half is luck. So, um, yeah. the thing is, uh, j just like you said, if you don't go in the right season at the right time of the day uh you will struggle to get a great image or recreate an image that you've seen yeah yeah so true man gotta put in the work yeah 
Okay, so I'm going to share uh, an image here, and then we're going to analyze it and see. Okay. Um, so this image right here, um, this I believe I shot. Let me see if I can find it they, in Lightroom, but it's been a while. This is this is one of the very first um, times when I first started. Uh, this is 20, yeah. 2016, <laughs> so almost four years ago. Uh, this yeah. other girl was like six months she's she's now like almost five <laughs> this is mm -hmm. my my daughter my one of the twins and my sister-in-law and i shot this nice. at a wedding right okay. it's more like a like a wedding with all the family there and everything and i shot this at the wedding um mm. there, are, there are a few things that's wrong with this picture yeah and first off if i zoom in yeah you can see that they are both out of focus mm -hmm. right uh, but look at right. my settings here. That's why I decided to do this in Lightroom so you can see my settings that I'm using. Now, something is wrong. Just by looking at the settings, I yeah. can tell something is wrong. Right. Yeah. But like I said, this is um, one of the things where I say people need to learn their cameras and learn the uh -huh. exposure triangle. Right. Uh -huh. uh, this is at the very beginning of my career. Right. Um, and looking at this shot right now, I definitely will not shoot this with these settings again. What is wrong with these settings? Well, first, let's look at the lens that I'm using. I'm using an EF 75 to 300 millimeter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, with that lens, it's a long lens. Right? Yep. Uh, look at my shutter speed. My shutter How speed fast is, was it? <laughs> my shutter speed is at 150th of a second. Mm. Right? With this lens, <laughs> I shouldn't be shooting anything less than maybe at minimum 125. What? 125, 150. Right? Uh, 150, they were about. But here I am shooting at 150. So you are holding this long lens at 150th of a second. Definitely your hands are going to shake, right? So yeah. you're going to introduce motion blur into the shot. Um, and as you can also see, even though I'm shooting at f5.0, it doesn't mean nothing because the shutter speed is way too low for that kind of lens and for mm -hmm. the, the weight of the lens, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and that's one thing that um, we need to learn as, as photographers is that because the, 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 the main rule is that um, you always have to try as much as possible um, to shoot at twice your, your focal length. Yeah. Right. So if your length is um, 75 millimeters, then you have to try to multiply that by two for your shutter mm -hmm. speed. Uh, in this case, I'm not even at 75, right? Not to talk about multiplying that 75. I'm way below 75. Right, 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 right. The camera I was using at that time, I believe, was uh, the so, um, time, uh, no, it was a Canon um, 7D Mark II. So that camera, it's a DSLR, no in-body stabilization. The lens I'm using has no lens stabilization. Um, and I'm shooting that at a really low shutter speed. So hmm. it's expected that you're going to have that shaky hands and you're going to introduce motion blur. Um, or even if your subject moves a little bit, that's going to throw out your focus. And that's exactly right. what happened in this, in this image. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that's a, that's a very good analysis you have there. And, uh, uh new new photographers can easily learn from that you know shooting with su such a long lens it's very important to shoot with a faster shutter speed it's like yeah. that is key yeah. at the very at the very minimum your shutter speed should be uh one over the exact length of your lens at the very minimum but mm -hmm. if possible if possible always double it and that gets rid of the the shake yeah I learned that the, the, the hard way when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started, um, my, my very first year, I was shooting in auto a lot, especially when, when I'm a little, a little confused and I'm not getting the sentence right, I quickly switched to auto. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and for some reason, the camera is not smart enough that, hey, even though you are in auto, you have a, I had a 20, four to three hundred millimeter lens and right. it would tr it would try to be taking pictures at like one over 25 you know and then i'll be wondering why the images are not sharp and the, yeah. the camera is just not smart enough so as quickly as possible if you can get into shooting manual with full control uh that would be great yeah yeah that's where the power comes from manual right 
Yep, yep, that's, yep. That's that's where the power yeah, comes. The, the the ideal place to shoot is always to learn to shoot in manual. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I, I always tell people if, if 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 you see manual to be too much um, of a um, hassle for you at the beginning, then try mm -hmm. learning in one of the priority modes, aperture priority or shutter yep. priority. Yeah. Uh, right. Please start off from there. But auto, I, I always discourage people from putting your camera in auto or program mode. Mm -hmm. then, You're right you're not taking pictures you, you're just taking snapshots right yeah um, the camera is just going to look at the scene and just decide what it thinks is best right, mm -hmm. right. without even knowing what it's looking at so right. you, if, if at least if you're shooting one of the priority modes the best way is to go to manual but if you're shooting one of the priority modes you know that you can control one of the three parameters um and at least get um, a better image out of what than what the camera thinks is it's, it's yeah good. and it's a practice thing like, don't think that you're going to become a master overnight. Like, you got to practice. That's right, what I tell right, people right, in the right. group is, like, don't expect you to become a master in a week. You got to put in a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I also say, you know, you also got to have fun, right? Because if you're not having fun, then you're not going to, you're not going to do it. Right? Mm -hmm. like, you, need to have, you need to enjoy it or else. What's, what's the point? Exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's so many rules and settings and numbers and all this stuff. It's, like, it's so easy to get lost and it's so easy to just, like, not do it. Mm-hmm. So as long as you're having fun, somehow, the more that you're going to learn, the more that you're going to retain. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Very true. Let me, sh let me show you. Uh, hey. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to uh, start up my uh, laptop. When I'm all done, yeah. I will I'll get up here again. I'll try and connect again from the laptop. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Funny, man. So, yeah, you go ahead. Okay. Gonna share a photo uh, from the Woodbine, the Winter Woodbine stations that I want to. Oh. Share that. Sweet. The photos on the screen. Um. Yep. Cool. So this is at this was at Woodbine in February, and just a bunch of like winter art installations here. And I was trying to photograph this installation. Uh, a couple problems. Obviously, the people they don't really complement the photo. Um, the sky isn't really very interesting, and it doesn't really do the photo any good. Um, I don't. I didn't really, really like the sand at all. And I was about to give up I just on this whole um, photo. But then if you start to, like the importance of moving around, especially like around a fixed object is as soon as you get closer, right? I, I started to get closer, started, these kids are up here, someone looking up, whatever. But then I got really close and then you get something like this. Right, so it totally eliminates the sand and the people and like basically the blah sky and you get this kind of symmetrical photo. And I think that's the power of just moving around and also you always want to look up. I love that shot. Because you just never know what's there, right? Like, I mean, this is a completely different photo from what I just showed you guys. Yep, yep. That's that's what we call working the scene, right? So, so around, because um, you just never know, especially yeah. when you're you want to work the scene because you just don't know, like from this to like this, it's like, what? <laughs> yep. It, it, it's, like it's, it's, it's actually hard to tell whether it, that is the same thing, right? Uh, but that's what we call working yeah, the scene, you don't, working you with your angles, um, playing around, you know, different composition styles and scales to see uh, what actually works. Because um, this shot right here, you have the wide angle. Um, for, some, for certain things, it will work in this wide angle. Um, from afar off a little bit, but yeah. I think I, when you got a lot more closer, I like that shot. When you got closer, um, it, it looks yeah. better. Yeah. Sorry, you were just cut out there, Evans, for a second. So I missed about ten oh. seconds of what you were talking about. But yeah, sorry, I was saying I uh, think... looking looking at the final image that you showed right here, right? Yeah. And comparing that to the first image, um, where you work your way through the scenes to get to this tight angle, I kind of like this angle a lot more because of the 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 uh, convergent lines and the, yeah. the leading lines that's mm -hmm. 
you know, and the shapes, right? Um, yeah. They make for a better image than just staying far off and um, yeah. going off with, with that in the original shot. Yeah. You never want to shoot something like bang on from like dead center because yeah. sometimes it's not really interesting. Sometimes you want to get different perspectives and angles and try to get something that someone else may not typically see. And that's what really makes your photos stand out. And that's what you would consider a banger because you shot something that a lot of people didn't even think about shooting. Exactly, and and it's 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 not a, it's, it's like see when when you go to a, a scene, um, especially when the scene is like a tourist scene, like for example, yeah. we go to Niagara Falls a lot. Me and my family we like to go to Niagara Falls a lot, and when you get to Niagara Falls, it's like everybody is standing at that same one spot taking pictures. Yep. Right. So yeah. you don't want to do the same thing that everybody is doing. No. You want to try a different angle. You want to try something Always. that is a little more different. Yeah. Right. Um, that's that's what it's all about. When you see all these uh, travel pictures on Instagram, uh, so many people have been to the same spot, the same place. But what makes Always. one picture stand out from the other? It's the perspective, the angle, the 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 you know, the the composition of, of the same shot. Um, and depending on how you put all of these together and and work your your scene you may come up with a better shot than everybody else because you didn't take the yeah. lazy way out, which is stay where everybody is standing and mm -hmm. take the shots, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying go out and be crazy and do crazy stuff because we've seen photographers try to do yeah. crazy stuff and break the rules. Don't break the rules. And fall, and fall into uh, and lakes, fall into and, lakes stuff. and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't break the rules, but work the scene, right? Look at from different angles, different Always. perspectives and see what works out best. Always. I got to I gotta show you, I was going to show you a photo from actually... Niagara Falls. Yep. As we're on that topic, and just kind of show you the difference. Now, mind you, I was using a prop, but let me just see what it is. Uh, Wait. So, so Paul, um, I was away for a little bit. So that picture was dope. Well, what's wrong with that picture? I just I thought show we're you showing bad, bad, bad pictures yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this photo. Here, I'll show you again. This photo. Uh huh. I was showing you the difference, like this, this, it was just for like from dead center, right? You oh, have okay. this glass and you have these people, you have this blast guy. It's not really mm -hmm, that good. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. As soon as you start Got moving it. closer, moving closer, and then that's when you get to here. Right? Nice. That's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. And falls. So essentially, yeah, people come and they'll shoot this, right? Whatever. Uh -huh. what I was time, about. You know, like, <laughs> great. Very exciting. But one of my buddies had a lens ball. So we started playing around with it. Mm -hmm. and honestly, like, sometimes you want to go for detail than, like, a wide shot. Like, you don't, because mm -hmm. everyone knows Niagara Falls. You want to get details of it. I see. You know, see. like, try to, yeah. try, to, try to use... The falls is like a background, but the lens ball is your like your subject. Right. So nice. sometimes, sometimes that's what I do. I, I I don't even go for like the like the hero shot. I try to get like the details of it. Like even even this Ferris wheel. Like here's here's just a general picture of the Ferris wheel. It's not very interesting. But as soon as you get closer, like as soon as you get closer. You know, you, this Ferris wheel could be like anywhere in the world. You have no idea, mm -hmm. right? Just makes it more more interesting. Yeah, like sometimes you want to get the detail. I think mean, detail details definitely matter. See if I have something else here. Yep. So there are times where you 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 want to fill the frame with 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 everything. Right? Yeah. So go in tighter, fill out the frame, um, get some you know unique perspective of what your subject yeah. is. I know there are times where we want to see that wide open thing, um, wide angle of the whole thing, uh, but most of the time, just yes. take, the, take the thing apart, right? Focus on it a little bit, portions at a time, and sometimes you can get good angles um, that way as well. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Like, um, even trying to use something to, like a balance photo, trying to use this, like, dinosaur guy as the foreground, you have, like, the car as the background. It just uh, it just makes it more interesting than just kind of like your general 
photo like this, which is typically what people will shoot if they're just kind of hanging around. Yep. But people you know, you want to across the street and just shoot yeah, them, right? like there's a Tim's. Like you see the Tim's right here. You have these garbage bins. You have these people that are basically distractions in the photo. Like you, like whenever you want to do photography, you want to avoid distractions, right? So whether it's garbage bins or people, or there's Tim Hortons here, there's the dinosaur that I shot. Like you want to see how you can use things to, to your advantage when you're trying to uh, make a, make a photo. And, um, but you know what, honestly, sometimes like just taking like a general kind of dead on photo from the center shows you what else you need to do. Like, Cause if you're looking at the photo in your camera screen, it's like, well, that's not going to work. Let me see what else I can do. So sometimes, so sometimes you need like a base to like work from. Um, sure. Yeah, Niagara Falls. That was uh, this was something February. Late, I think this is like late. This is the day that Kobe died, actually, because I remember someone told me Kobe died that day. So, yeah, <laughs> great memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the next yeah. photo I want to share. So this one is. Um, from the look of it, somebody would say it's not it's not that bad, but <laughs> it is bad. Yeah, um, <laughs> I I stick this this was my living room, so I just converted my living yeah. room. Sometimes I convert my living room to a studio, and uh, I do some shots. So in this picture, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. Um, one is the framing, right? So yeah, it's a little bit too tight. Not enough room headroom. Yeah. Um, the baby's fingers and hands are all cut out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you look at the background, the background itself is very distracting. Mm. Um, people may say, well, yeah, if I want to edit it out, I can actually take this into f uh, uh, Photoshop and fix it. Yeah. The background distractions and maybe even extend a little bit of a headroom. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at um, the boy's expression, right? Mm -hmm. As photographers, we always have to look out for some sort of expression, especially as, since I was shooting this at home in a studio setting kind of thing, right? I should be directing him on his expressions and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, so these are some of the little things that, um, little, little details that as photographers, sometimes we need to keep in mind when we are shooting. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when we are shooting, um, we get caught up in the click, 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 click. Yeah, that. yeah. We Forget. lose inside of the little, little things that we can adjust um, yeah. whilst we're shooting to make the photos better. Mm -hmm. um, this photo to some people may be okay, uh, but when I mm -hmm. look at it, I wouldn't choose this to edit or I wouldn't send it out to a client because first wow. the expression is a little awkward um, and not, not enough headroom. It's too tight. Um, close to the head, right? Like the, the, yep. the, head, the top of the head. You need a little bit more room in the, in my opinion, right? You do. Uh, right I don't know right, what you right, guys right. think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's just so many things going through your head when you're shooting, right? Like it's hard to keep track of everything that you need to do. So, I mean, again, I think it comes with practice, right? The more that you do it, the more it just comes like second nature. All the things that you have to make sure that are being met. So you have the best photo possible. That's a practice thing. And, practice thing. Yes, it is. And d these days, uh, with um, Instagram and Facebook cropping, to get the sharpest pictures on your um, Instagram or Facebook, it has to be, uh, you know, 8 by 10 or yeah. 4 yeah. by 5 or something like that. Yeah. And so, for, for a long image like this, this is a 4 by 6. Yep. Having mm -hmm. him fill the frame like this, if you crop this, you're going to cut off some you're parts to be able parts to post to be it. Able to post it. Yep. So... Yep. So, I mean, just Instagram has actually just changed how I shoot. Now I shoot with enough space around yeah. so, so that I can have that and also have some to print as well. Yeah. You shoot the crop, man. Exactly. Exactly, so, so, yeah. So like said, yeah. Um, with, with all these uh, high yeah. yep. megapixel cameras, yeah. Yep, because this is, this is the a7 III I shot this with. So this is like yeah. a 24 megapixel camera. I could have left a little more room on the sides and on top of the head. Um, and even yeah. at the bottom, so that when I crop it for Instagram and do that four by five ratio, I will still be able to have the full human being, uh, the full subject, actually say, in, in the frame, right? But with right. this kind of cropping in camera, um, there's no room for me because if I try to crop this for Instagram, 
I would yeah, have to yeah. cut out a lot of the bottom, or mm -hmm. the, and the top has no room anyway, so I have to cut out a lot of the bottom. Man, sometimes a crop kills your photo, eh? Yeah, it just kills it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The crop just kills it. Yeah, just kills it. Yeah, brutal. Yeah. So that was that okay. image. <laughs> So, okay, so what, this is what I'm going to do. Evans, I'm going to see if there are some pictures on this uh, laptop that I want to talk about, and I'll just email you, and then you can, you can show it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a picture. I can't find it right now, but if I do, I'll send it. So I took a picture of my wife when uh, she was pregnant with, uh, was it the first one or the second one? I don't remember. <laughs> one of the kids. Of them, and, yeah. <laughs> yes, I think it was the first one because... At that time, I was just so excited about the picture. I felt like it was one of the best pictures I'd ever taken. And I loved it. I actually got a makeup artist to come to the house to do everything. And she ordered the clothes online and they came. And, you know, we went out to, to take this picture. And uh, I'll try and show you guys before this thing yeah. ends. Yeah, sure. So uh, along the way, I mean, so I printed it. I had a big print of it. And then... Four years later, I look at the picture and I'm like, the picture is good, but then the sky was just blown out. And mm. you could you could see patches of the sky that have lost detail. And mm. with uh with what I look for these days, that was the first thing my eye was going to. But four years ago, I didn't even see that. Like my eyes didn't even go there, you know? Yeah. And today I'm like, I, I kind of just want to go back and, and fix that. So but the, I mean, good thing is the sky replacement and all that. But I, I, I don't do that a lot for my pictures. Yeah. So those are just uh, l little things you learn as you go along. Like you have to pay yeah. attention to the whole image and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Your eye, your eyes, your eyes train more to like the whole image. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's good, man. Yeah. Hopefully, you can put that on the screen. Yes. Let me see if I can find it. Oh Lord. Yeah. I'll share a photo quick while you're doing that. Okay. Um, so this photo in Toronto's financial district. Oh my God, I was... <laughs> so like, this guy's not in focus, pretty sure. Can you zoom in? Yeah, mm, not really. But really what killed me, cause like there's this killer reflection here. I was gonna ask him if I was gonna ask him just to like slow down, just so I'm gonna take a picture, but the stupid discount van went by. I was really upset with that. I'm like, oh man, like it was beautiful with the umbrella. It was great, but it's like the discount van ruined it for me. But I'm always looking for like good reflection shots, especially like after it rains. Or I guess the snow was melting them during this day. But man, it would have been good. If he if I just got him to pose a little bit been really good i don't know what lens i had 34 mil yeah i would just mess around that day but you never know you never know what's gonna happen you always gotta be ready in case something just ran randomly appears right that's true that's true you, know? you never know distractions i hate them <laughs> it's random drive me crazy okay so i'm going to share this picture here okay um, as you guys can see, I'm showing a lot of events pictures because I shoot mainly events, right? This is, was like a 50th yeah. birthday, a 50th birthday event that I shot. The picture in itself, um, it's okay. I tried to get the best, you know, uh, given the lighting conditions, but there are still a lot of problems with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of these problems are easy to fix, right? So, so. This, this is the thing, the, the whole, sh um, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about the fact that not every picture you take, it's going to be a banger, um, oh. and how practice and practice will help you to refine your craft. Uh, and this picture here is one of the typical examples that I, I would want to show. Um, first off, the image itself is underexposed. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also see the light in, in that room. It's a little bit more, uh, what do we call it, mixed. Mm -hmm. The lighting was mixed. Um, there was not enough lighting in there. And one thing I should have done in this scenario was probably bump up my ISO a little bit because I was shooting in the A7 III. 
and from experience i know my a7 III, i can shoot up to maybe 3200 iso and still get a good usable image but here i am i'm indoors low light and i'm shooting at iso 200 right mm -hmm. so first off the image is a little bit underexposed i could have brought that iso up to maybe 1600 the second thing is that my shutter speed is at 125 which is okay uh for uh, for an 85 millimeter lens it's okay but i'm shooting at f 1.8 mm -hmm. but i have two people in the scene one mm -hmm. is slightly in front and the other one is way, a little bit behind so at f 1.8 it's really hard to keep both of them in focus and as you can see here the the woman is in focus and she's sharp but let's move to the 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 guy and as you can see he's out of focus mm -hmm. right because that f 1.8 was not um wide enough aperture or good enough aperture to get both of them right in um in focus Right. So that's one of the, some of the things that we need to take a look at and, and keep in mind that if you're shooting a group shot or you're shooting uh, two people or more, two or more people, yeah. and they're not all on the same plane, then you got to make sure that you're shooting with a, um, a, an open aperture to try to get everybody in the shot as sharp as possible. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I, I've, especially at an event where you're moving really fast, sometimes is uh, it, it, you, you lose sight of some of these things, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. you have to make it become second nature where you know that, okay, this is a group shot. I got to move up and I got to bump up my, my shutter speed or I got to bring up my um, aperture higher so that I can get yeah. all of them in focus. And in this case, I could have done that. I probably could have even shot at F5.6 uh, if I had bumped up my ISO a little bit more. Yeah. So more light. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so what you just spoke about is actually uh, really good. I um, There's one thing I started doing after m missing focus a few times was that I would just, let's say, take my uh, lens, my camera, and then put it on, like, F4. And then I will put a battery on this uh, construction ruler, right? And then I will focus on the battery, and I will take the picture. And then after I take the picture, because there, there are markings on the ruler, you can actually tell uh, how many inches or how many feet is in focus. So yeah. that, that you, you use that to start building your memory of, okay, so F4 is about, let's say, uh, three feet for this lens, for, for my 50 millimeter. But just remember, it's going to be different for a 100 millimeter or a 200 mm -hmm. millimeter. So uh, the same F4 will give you a greater depth of field at 50 millimeters than it would at 100 millimeters. Mm -hmm. At 100 millimeters, F4 is much thinner. So once you know all those factors, then you know it helps. But still, still you get caught up sh shooting uh, F2, trying to get the smooth battery shot, and then they turn around and say, photographer, hey, gra grab a few shots, and then you turn around, there's a big group. Yeah. And then you forget to bump your f stop, the, your um, your aperture, and then your your kind of screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's lost cause, right? Yeah. I'm 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 wondering how I can go back into a uh, Facebook and just type a year and then look for the pictures I posted that year because uh, the pictures are my main uh computer, mm. but I'm just using the laptop here. I don't have anything stored on it, so I'm trying to find. Got it. it I know I I posted it on Facebook, so. Yeah. All okay. right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, let me show you. This is uh, our group went to Lower Bay Station, and for those of you who don't know what Lower Bay Station is, it's basically like a uh, not an abandoned but not a used subway station on Toronto subway network. It's actually used for a lot of movies. Su Suicide Squad was filmed there. A whole bunch of other movies were filmed on this kind of station. Anyway, our group got access to it. So we got a couple of models. This is one of the models, Tanya. But the lighting, like the lighting in the station was pretty bad. That you couldn't really get a great shot. That's out of focus. 
we asked them if they could like dim the lights. They said no. <laughs> Cause you can tell it just like, it's all fluorescent lighting. Like it was like really like the, like the, I mean, some people got really good shots, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't get it for some reason. I think there is some better ones down um, later on in this collection, but um, yeah, like the visions I had for this shoot did not really come to fruition. And I tried all sorts of things, but it's just the, the lighting. Let's see if I can show you. I think this might be my best shot of the whole thing. But you can see like the flesh the flesh and lights here, like just doesn't do it. You may have to I think that could be the best shot, but it's kind of grainy though, I think. It's not that great. What was my ISO? Only a hundred? Yeah, I don't even know what I was doing here. And and that's that's one of the one of the things. Um, see, um, sometimes when the exposure is not correct in camera, yeah, you end up with a lot of grain, right? Yeah. Um, so looking at that histogram, you can see that there is more to the right than to the, I mean, to the left than to the right, right? So there's a lot more dark tones, and I get it. That place is a little dark, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so the exposure looks like it's a little bit on the, on the underexposed side. Um, and that's some of the things that we always have to look at, making sure that, especially in low light, um, yeah. if, if you get your exposure, um, too low in low light situation and it's not correct, yeah. you're always going to have a hard time because as soon as you try to bring that exposure up in post, the yeah. amount of noise that get introduced is going to be a lot and it's going to be magnified because the exposure wasn't great in the beginning yeah. to deal with. Yeah. I know, I know. There's a lost cause a little bit, but um, yeah. I was trying to compensate for like the lighting situation. But I mean, like even this out of focus, like I think like, this could be one of the better ones. But again, it's not really in focus, right? Like you can tell. Well, that image is actually intriguing. If if the fingers were in focus, that image yeah. should, should be good yeah. to go. Yeah. 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 You can sharpen the fingers in Photoshop. I could. I'm just lazy. <laughs> Do a couple, a, a couple layers of uh, high pass, and then yeah. uh, on this, on the small phones, no, nobody can tell. Yeah, I could. I just chose not to. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same kind of deal. It's a tough place to shoot. It's a tough place to shoot. I mean, it's cool. It's cool to go down there, just because not everyone gets to go down there. So. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we can do it again when we get out of this lockdown because our, our um, wait list for our wait list to get into this thing was longer than the people who actually got in. So, you know, I couldn't get in. I pretty, was on the wait list. You were on the wait list, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, like they were pretty strict about, they were pretty strict about the number. So I think it was about 30 people or something. And they said they can't allow any more than that. So hopefully we can do it again. Hey, Evans, I just sent you uh, two pictures. Awesome. Let me pull it up. And, um, and uh, hey, guys, if you are just joining us, please do well to give a, a thumbs up to the video. It helps. And, uh, and ask any question, you know. Come hang out. Oh, Evans, you know, we can actually, uh, you can actually just invite people on. They can just click the link and, and join. Yep. So if somebody's on and, and they, they want to come see Hi. something for a little bit, yeah, that's yeah. that'll be cool. So if you're watching and you wanna you want to give a comment, uh, just let me know in the in the in the chat and I will give you an access to come up and uh, say hi, say something. I'm, I'm gonna share this on my Facebook now. I should I've shared it a long time ago. Mm. Let me download this. So you guys have wait list to 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 get to, to get on to do shoots in uh, um, Toronto. That's Only for select uh, one. Yeah, Only for select for one. The events, right? For select events. Events that have program. to, yeah, like if we, yeah, like that was just that was that was a special one, and that was their rules. So usually they're open. Like you can have like a hundred people join if you want.
you get the photo? Are you showing Slurm's photo? Oh, I'm trying to, uh, Paul, can you talk, say something? I'm trying to uh, bring it into light, Lightroom so I can. You want me to share a photo of mine? Yep. Oh, you're trying to bring mine into Lightroom? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if, if well, one of them might have the uh, info, but the other one I just downloaded from Facebook, so it might not have the, the exif oh, yeah, that's fine. data. Yeah. I just want to be able to bring it in so I can share it. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are so many really bad pictures on the main computer that I can talk about for days on end. But <laughs> next time, next, next time, time when we are able to, yes, there's always a next time always when next I'm time. able to get the stuff together. Oh, yeah. 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 So this photo, the first thing that I don't like, there's just too much negative space, way too much. Had to crop that. Um, I don't even know if this person's in focus. So let's see. I don't think, oh my God, what happened? Where did you go? It's a different photo, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, not in focus. Too much negative. Hold on. Uh, uh, um, Paul, we are not seeing your image. Oh, you're not? Wait. Yeah, you're not sharing your screen. <laughs> there know. it is. That was me. I think it's coming. Uh, that was you. I, I just yeah. up here. And you want to you want to go and show Salorms? Okay, so I have yeah, a go. mix photo open. Let me bring yeah. that up. Uh, which one are you bringing up first? Which whichever one, one you bring up, up I'll talk about. Which okay. whichever one? Just, just bring one up. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Okay. All right. So this image, I think it was about uh yeah about three years ago. When I took it, I didn't see anything that was wrong, but uh. You know, coming back to look at it on the computer, um, it was obvious that I was not considering the background when I was taking this image. Mm -hmm. And I could have played with the background a lot more, either yeah. have it properly centered or it wasn't even straight. If you look at the the bars behind them, yeah, it, the whole the whole image was tilted. Yeah, but it's not to level. be honest, <laughs> to be honest, at the time. I just thought, oh, I got them in focus and the background was out of focus and the image was good, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, even the cropping, today when I'm looking at the cropping, just like Paul mentioned earlier, there's too much negative space up yeah. here. If I'm, not, yeah. if I'm not using that space to display that dome properly and the dome is like all the way to the left. Yeah. And, you know. Plus you cut off the top of it, I think. Exactly. I could have gone in a little closer to focus more on them. Mm -hmm. And so, but at the end of the day, they liked it. <laughs> they liked it? And they, they were like, well, yes, but at the same time, the, the, you know, when other photographers look at it or other yeah. clients who are uh, savvy look at it, they'll be like, oh, this guy is not uh, able to pick on little things like that. So, if there's any other thing you guys think can be fixed on this image, you can go ahead and say it. Mm. So, so one thing that I wanted to say is that sometimes we as photographers get caught in the technical stuff, right? So that the clients may not even think about. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So sometimes when we look at it, it may not look good to us because we have that knowledge of what is supposed to be good photography. Uh, but sometimes to it's just the 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 emotion and the and the what it it, it means for that um, client, right? Yeah. So sometimes, mm -hmm. even though the image may not meet my expectation, right, I will still give it out to the client if it has some kind of uh, emotion to it. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. something like this, I definitely will give it out to them. Um, you know what I mean? But it's. For them, it will it will have a meaning. It will have it will have some purpose, right? They're not mm -hmm. looking at the straightness of the lines or, or stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that I I can say, and I think you mentioned it, one is not straight. That's good. But um, also, see the guy's head or the lady's head. You we have um, it's like whatever is in the background is sticking through their head, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The neck right? is coming out, of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. yeah. It's yeah, like a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's one thing I try to always avoid. Um, 
things sticking out of people's heads and 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 coming out of their bodies and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's one, a good that's one. one of the things that I take a look at. Yeah, and and with 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 that too, um, even with a lot of outdoor pictures, some people are particular about it, but they you they don't they want you to watch out so that the horizon doesn't like cut off the the person's neck you know <laughs> if, the, if, the, if the person's neck is right above the horizon, the horizon. it looks weird from afar mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but then again others argue that it's art and that's where sure. they want to put the person's head <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the whole thing it's because photography is an art, it's a creative form, right? right? So it's mm-hmm. open to interpretation. What mm-hmm. looks good to you may not be the same looking good to somebody. Um, so it's right. subjective in, in, in certain ways, right? Even mm-hmm. though there are some basic principles that we're supposed to follow, at the end of the day, it's still subjective. So what may not look good to you or me may be perfectly fine for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For clients, so happy, man, up, it's all good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Paul, go ahead and show the image you're trying to show and uh, we couldn't see. Okay. Let me see. You got my screen? Yep. Cool. Yep. Where was this? Okay, let's show this one. This is in Oakville, um, which for Salorum, it's about a half hour west of Toronto. Um, yeah, like we just said, there's just too much negative space. I was trying to frame her somehow. Um, she's probably out of focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just like, she, like, I was basically just like, she didn't know I was shooting her, I'm pretty sure. So I was just kind of like, I had like a 200 millimeter on, which I was shooting with. Um, one one sixtieth of a second. These people here are distracting, so I'm just going to show you like why moving around is just so important because you can use the lighthouse. Like again, not a great photo. There's just too much rock here. You can't really see her. This is uh, the lighthouse isn't really prominent, not the way that it should be. But then the next photo, like it's. It's just better. It's just better composed, right? You have her. I mean, it's also edited, which helps. But she's kind of looking at the lighthouse, whereas the other photo you couldn't see where she was looking. So um, it just kind of creates more of a moment in the photo. And you kind of use the rock. You kind of use this side of the rock as more more of like a vignette a little bit. Whereas the first photo, I mean, you don't even know what she's doing. So always look, always I, photo, always I actually try like that first photo. Which this one? Yeah, yeah, I like it too. Yeah, so so see, this is this is one of the scenarios where I think negative space actually works. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, the negative space at the top in this particular picture, I think it works out. And okay. you have the rocks um, mm-hmm. as the foreground leading into her, right? Yeah. Um, so for this particular image, yeah, maybe the guys uh, uh, are the people up on the hill above her is a little yeah. bit of a distraction yeah. um those can be removed in photoshop if you really want to mm-hmm. uh, but for the negative space i think it's in actual in in, in this picture that negative space actually works mm. if, if uh mm. left to me alone i would actually bring her down just a little bit more to exaggerate that negative space negative to make space. it to make it known that hey this is what i'm doing yeah. so if you were to bring her down just a little bit more it would just be uh, yeah. perfect for that kind of uh, shot. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So for me, the only thing that strikes me on this is the sky. And yeah. but the, the truth is, it could have been an overcast day, yeah. and there were no there were no clouds, and n- nobody really knows. So no. uh, because I cannot see any clouds, I will assume that there were no clouds, and yeah. there were, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Just overexposed, also. <laughs> Well, yeah, like I mean, said, because there are no, if, if yeah. there were, if there were patches of clouds, yeah. that would, you know, give me a, a re- reference. But because there are no patches of clouds, yeah. it could yeah. just be a foggy, overcast day. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And, that and, with, with a, mm-hmm. and that kind of adds to what you're saying. Yep, yeah, for me that that kind of adds to the picture. It adds to the, the emotion that this image brings, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that even though 
um, it may be blown out. In this particular scenario, you can't really tell whether it's actually blown out because there's no um, like mm -hmm. um, mix, there's no, there's reference, no point. reference point to yeah. what proper exposure in the sky area is supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have that rocks that's leading into her. Mm -hmm. um, and you have that negative up space out there. It could just be an overcast day, you know, with no clouds, and mm. it actually works out for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are really good friends. <laughs> All right, so I'll bring up Meek's second photo, and then we can uh -oh, see. I'm up again. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. So. So this is the image I was talking about. It's like when I took this image four years ago, I was like, man, this image is really nice. Yeah. We planned it. I actually uh, used the flash, but I used the bare bulb. I didn't, I didn't use any diffuser because I wanted the, the light to be a little far away so I can show more of the environment. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I aimed the flash at her face, and I had the flash at a very low power. What sh what I should have done was increase the flash power. It was a high speed sync flash. Increase the flash power and increase my shutter speed because my skies are blown out. If you look at the clouds, you can yeah. see that the the whites, the highlights are completely blown out. Yeah. And um, somehow at that time I couldn't see. Today that's all I see. So this image is one of the images that I plan to go back one day and fix. Mm. And, and reprint, because I actually printed it 20 by 30. It's somewhere in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Find it, man. I did, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so yeah I, 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 for this image, I like it, though. Um, I see the overexposure you're talking about. And mm -hmm. I think as a result of that overexposure, you can see that inside the clouds and along the, the edges of the horizon of the bush, um, the houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Tree tops, you can see some sort of um, um, what do you call it, abandon and stuff happening, right? Because mm. there's so much, so much difference between the dynamics range of, right. of, of that stuff, right? But yeah, if if you had um, exposed for the clouds, the highlights, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then make your flash more powerful, more powerful, exactly. The image. It's still good as this. I, it would have opinion, popped. It's, it's, it would, it would have, have popped pop. a lot more because you would yeah. have balanced out the disguise and and her um, the exposure and her a lot more. Um, right, that's one, right, one, right. one way I always do it. When I get to a scene, especially if I'm using flash, the first mm -hmm. thing I do is I, I, I get the proper exposure for the background and then I use my AD600 to kind of fill in on the, on the subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was using an AD six hundred. I didn't know any b better. I was using it at low power. I was just. It's like the funny thing is, I was only focused on the skin. I didn't want the skin to blow out. Blow out. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I achieved that. But I didn't achieve success overall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, like I said, see, this is one of those images where, um, at the end, to the client, the overblown, mm -hmm. overexposed clouds may not matter. Right, 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 right. Because the the whole um, goal of this image or this shoot was to get some maternity shoots done. Right, and so she can't go back herself, and get pregnant again. Yeah, one, but, <laughs> but to her, to her, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like to her, this would be success because she sees herself. She's she's in there nice, beautifully, right? Um, right. It's just the background that is overexposed, but. To the naked, um, to the untrained um, person, client who is just in there looking yeah. for good photos of themselves, um, this mm -hmm. wouldn't even matter. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't even matter mm -hmm. because to them, they just want a maternity shoot. They got their maternity photos, and and they're good. It's not too bad. Yep. It's the sky. Yeah, the sky. I get it. So. Uh... I'm going to Evans. I'm going to add a, a comment here and try awesome. and see if you can you can bring it up there. Yep. In the chat. Uh, on uh, YouTube. On YouTube. Oh, sorry, on YouTube. Today we uh, we don't have a lot of people watching. Yeah, today's been a little bit quiet. Um, not many people. Yeah. To comments. 
Um, let's see. It says who is watching? Oh, okay. Nice, nice. See? Who is watching? And I <laughs> so can I like see that. a picture of you in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's easy to bring up comments and actually talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean that that's the only reason I pre- I, I will prefer this to the Zoom. Right, but right. then I don't get to use my cool camera. <laughs> you got to use it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. find. I'll figure it out. I'll find a way around it. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm, I'm beginning to like the stream yards. Um, it looks like it worked out today. Um, and no, stream yard is good. It's pretty, pretty easy. Just one click. You just click on show, and it pops in there in the bottom. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to uh. Try it and and see, uh, just streaming okay, random stuff here and we see. Go. There's yeah. another comment coming in. <laughs> <laughs> see, I there it is. We got a comment. Come back. Says, "Hey guys, I'm watching. Thanks guys. The Thank you." The Thank you. In a comment gets a car. <laughs> Hello, Pelika Bugs. How you doing? Are you enjoy? Are, are, <laughs> are we teaching? Are we teaching? Get something good. <laughs> <laughs> that's Rick, that's keep up the good work. Nice. <laughs> that's my yeah. wife, people. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> 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 and I know so about uh, so everything I know about photography. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> sometimes I forget your, your your YouTube name. All right. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, All right, she... guys, so maybe we should be wrapping up. It's uh, an hour already. An hour. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah. Dream Yard. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. If only I can fix my... I, I realize that the the uh, the delay is a lot less in Stream Yard, too. Mm, yeah. You realize that? Yeah. yeah. Better, better connection. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, thanks, Evans, for setting this up. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully, uh, gave you a little bit of insight into just basically keep practicing. Just keep practicing with photography. Click a bug. It's the only thing my brother gave me. Oh yeah, yeah. Palika <laughs> bugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice name. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And a, and, a, and a big thanks to uh, our sponsor, Streamyard. Big thanks. And is there any way they can remove that uh, Please remove the water. Lo- yeah. logo from right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want us Please. to go pro to remove that logo. We're not, we're not pro yet. But we're, we're almost. There. We'll give them, we'll give them a free shout out every time they just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it though. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out today. Um, as we said from the beginning, um, this tonight's tonight's show was just to let you know that um, you're not always gonna get that perfect shot. Um, there are times where your shots will look like they're garbage, but it's a learning curve. You learn from the bad shots to create good shots. Mm-hmm. Um, don't go out on Instagram and just start comparing yourselves to everybody and um, feeling like your photos are not good enough. Um, it's a learning process. Keep shooting. Um, don't give yeah. up. Because what you want to know is that when you're on Instagram and you're looking at all those shots, um, those people have been doing it for years. Secondly, yeah. they're not showing you the garbage shots that they took, they are yes. all going through maybe 50 shots and picking out the best one to edit for Instagram. So don't let that get to you, right? Um, shoot as much as you can um, and, and learn from the mistakes that you make. Um, and that's what we wanted to do today. We wanted to let you guys know we're not embarrassed to show our, our, <laughs> I love our not so good work. <laughs> um, I love so that's it. what we did today. We showed you guys our not so good work. Um, and go out there and shoot. Don't worry about the mistakes. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah what you do, but learn from those mistakes to get you better. 100%. Well said. Well, well said. I think you said you said everything that I was thinking about, so <laughs> I'm good here. <laughs> I think sometimes you want to get uh, you want to get details instead of a wider angle. So if you want to move around, you want to look up, you want to look down, you want to change your perspective. Because that's what really makes a cool photo, is a photo that kind of stands out apart from a lot of other people's photos. So don't be afraid to Try something different, and get go go tight instead of wide. Because sometimes that can make for really cool photos. Sometimes, and just keep playing around with your with your 
composition because the composition really makes your photos. So um, that's the great thing about photography now is you can take a million shots and you don't, have, unless you're shooting film, but I mean, you know, typically you can take a million shots and there's, there's no harm to it. So shoot as much as possible and you'll definitely get a couple of bangers out of it. Absolutely. Awesome. So Pelican says, yeah, uh, Pelican Back says, yes. Yeah. You compare your starting point exactly. to someone else's finish line. Exactly. Totally. I, I think we should make her a moderator next time we go. Yeah. There. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yes, yeah, she'll be the moderator. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. When, our, when, when our stream gets big and then we have a lot of people yep. posting comments all over the place. Yeah. Yep. Coming, man. All right, yeah. guys. So thank oh, you next... for hanging out with us. Um, we'll meet you again next week. Next Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday. Uh, look in the links in the description. We have the channels of all our guys in there. Uh, go follow us. We rotate from channel to channel on a weekly basis. Um, so follow, subscribe, so you don't miss out when we um, schedule our next stream for next Wednesday. Please. All right. Stay Thanks blessed. For... Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good week.